Okay, hello everybody. Welcome to uh, LibGDX introduction. I'm. Do you hear me? Ah, in the background. Okay, no. Welcome everybody to the LibGDX introduction talk. I'm Alex from Endlabs, and uh, we want to show you a detailed and also quick introduction in, uh, to LibGDX um, game development framework. So, um, what is LibGDX? Actually, the big functionality it has it. Uh, you can write your games and deploy it on on any most most platforms around. So especially you can deploy your games on Android. You can deploy it on desktop, and you can also deploy it on the web, and even on iOS phones. You you can deploy it. There has been written a backend to deploy software on this. And so while at Chilex, so at first I did have a look. Okay what engines are there around to write games uh, and which are performant. So, yeah, as you can see, um, the LibJX outperforms a lot of engines out there. Um, okay, this is comparison to, to the Cocos, maybe. Do you know something about Love2D? No. No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't look that up. Um, okay, there's a lot of engines around. Um, XNA? Um, uh, yeah, it. this is a Linux benchmark, so no XNA. <laughs> ah, okay. So, um, so in initially, initially, I had a look on on the performance of these uh, different platforms, and I wanted to write a game which is cross-platform, and then uh, I had a look on the API, and this is well, well documented. So that's why I went for for LibGDX. So basic stuff about LibGDX. So it's all about OpenGL. So Actually, what libgdx is about, um, it um, wraps around, uh, wraps, does wrappings uh, on top of OpenGL graphics. So, OpenGL is the basic layer. Then you have, uh, like for desktop, you have uh, Java bindings with the lightweight Java game library. So maybe you have already um, had a look on, on this library or even developed something with it. And so this is the um, same technology it uses. We have uh, integrated audio I.O. capabilities into the engine. And what it does, especially it, uh, it does wrapping on top of these OpenGL technologies. You have uh, shape render objects inside LibGDX. You can do all the stuff um, that you know from OpenGL in a bit more wrapped around way using meshes uh, as well. And if you go up on the ladder, you can even do um, batching technology, you put all your rendering uh, stuff with the meshes into one batch and just send it to the GPU and, and render it at once, so you don't care about the underlying OpenGL technology anymore, so this is quite useful. Um, and it's, actually, it's, 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 I think it's the, the normal way to develop with, uh, with LibGDX uh, at the moment. But um, we even have a scene to graph, so um, in LibGDX, um, you can you can write um, uh, a yeah, scene graph way based. Uh, you can implement a scene graph based ba uh, ways so that you have uh, like a stage, and then you have actors inside the stage, and they can do actions. So this is very abstract concept, and yeah, we go into details of all these graphics uh, once more, and this will be Thomas who will so. I'll be I'll be showing how I even though LibGX has several layers, as Alex explained, the sprite batch and the, the scene graph and stuff, you still have access to to OpenGL itself, and this is simply just drawing a triangle, obviously, um, with OpenGL. Yeah. Yeah. We switch to the next one. Yeah. So. And then this is one layer up with sprite batching, where LibGDX it automatically handles the 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 geometry and stuff, and it batches all your geometry in one and sends it up to the graphics device in, in one payload. And this is the scene graph, you can see it gets even easier. You simply add an image, set the position, and give the, the scene graph the, the actor. And you can see by the, by the scene graph there, um, like I each, each of the each of the squares in there is a is a group node which contains several child scene actors which which themselves are the actual actual actors and 
each child is relative to the parent. Yeah, thank you, Thomas. So, talk a little, little bit more about features. So, we will also do sample games and show you in this case. So, um, yeah, just a sample graphic. So, what is all about game engines? Oh, okay, games are all about sprites. So, um, we have Mario here. Actually, he, he couldn't make it here. So Mario Zechner is a is a creator of Lipchidix. So <laughs> that's why I went for for a quick Mario demonstration. <laughs> so what you have inside games is uh, sprites, and you have textures, and we have texture regions inside um, which define um, the region we want to select and uh, render concept of regions and you have animations, um, animation frames then to animate your, your sprites. These are all available in LibTDX and you can put your textures into for example an atlas and and uh, speed up um, the rendering a little bit more. So what is <coughs> the normal life cycle of a LibTDX application? So um, you have um, it reminds you of uh, Android lifecycle, so it's basically a bit uh, the same. You have create resize, and when the application is running, for example, and something happens and uh, you lose focus, some incoming message, something happens on your phone, then uh, actually all the context uh, is lost, and LibGTX take care that this context is restored, and you re-render your application and rerun it. And of course you, you have post uh, dispose and stop. Okay. And inside code, this is the very basic sample of, of uh, the core project. So you would have a my game, Java class, and it implements this listener and all these methods you you just implement, and then with this you create and render your your game. So what do we do now? Um, show you a quick example like uh, online here, so we do project setup and show you how it is done in reality, how to do the projects and um, what what you can make out of a, a small sample project. Okay. So there's a tool around. Um, you can download it from the, from the internet. It's called GDX Setup UI. I really recommend it because um, it handles all the dependencies of, of these projects we will create. So I had a lot of errors in the beginning, changing jar files, moving jar files around. And it has a lot of external libraries as well you can integrate. And, and this makes it a lot more easier to do. It actually ships with OpenGL as well. So y you don't even need to download it. It's it's pretty much supported. Yeah, this is um, this is the the first thing you should see of LibGDX if you want to um, use LibGDX for game development. Then you can create your stuff here. For example, you this. okay. The name of the game you see here, the package game class. It's quite easy, and I will skip all the steps here. Here in overview, you see the project that will be created. You have a normal project, desktop, Android, HTML, iOS project. You can do even download the source code here and attach all the libraries. So what I have to do is um, I have to select the archive. Archive. Um, so go here. So once you download the zip file, you select here. And then you can even install third party libraries. If you won't use it for the sample, but if you want to do uh, physics body editing, um, you can just click on it, install it as well. Um, so my configuration is valid now. Just have to, yeah, that is fine. Okay, so I open the generation screen, I launch, and all my projects are created. So the Java core project, the Android project, the iOS project, HTML project, and the web project. That's it. So then I can go to to my clips. Uh, 
um, what I do is I import all the projects So I port it all at once, speed up, four projects. So now we have um, four game projects here. They, I just created them with the project setup of LoopGDX. And I'll show you a quick demonstration how to... Actually, this, this what I marked here, is a, is a core project. So inside the code core project you only have one Java class which is yeah a small sample game that is um, given by libgdx to you to show you the basics already and I'll start this game by launching the desktop project so actually what you always do uh, if you deploy something you can only deploy you cannot la launch uh, the Java project directly you have to deploy it on the on the correct system you're using so I run this desktop application as a travel project and it shows the screen this is the, the texture given it just shows a, a simple texture and what we now do we will work a bit on this project and create uh, a small ball game out of this okay okay so um just gonna show you how easy it is to 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 work with with libgdx. It's straight off the bat. So let's delete some some boilerplate code for now. Let's give it an arbitrary position. I have to switch to keyboard. <laughs> Did you see okay? Move up? Yeah. Oh, I didn't see German. Okay. <laughs> okay. It should be fine now. I don't like German keyboards. So, it's fine. Our spray is 64 by 64. Where did you save the text out? Okay. <laughs> Where is it? <laughs> <laughs> so, I have not integrated here. Um, is it the big one or the small one? Can you handle a big one? No. Okay. <laughs> I can give you a, a 80 by 80. That's fine. <laughs> it needs to be part to the less 2.0. Oh, it's You have to re render this one. Okay. Okay, take this one. Okay, let's go in first of all. We have to render it again. Let's uh, resize it. Okay. So, so it, that's how you handle assets. You plug it in your, your Android assets folder and libgdx, the product setup, it automatically links the folder to all the desktop, the, the core and the HTML5, whatever. So, so we need we need some input. So what do you do? You you, you implement the, the input processor interface and then in the create method you register whatever class as, as a listener for input okay so here are all the the input events scroll mouse moved the standard 
and obviously touch down will will register as a, as a finger touch on Android and a, a click on desktop. Ah. Okay. Let's do it in mouse mode. So. What I'm going to quickly be building is just a simple circle sprite, and it's going to it's going to follow the mouse wherever it moves. So we're going to have to create a simple vector. If if you don't know what a vector is, it's, it you can think of it as just a wrapper for an x and y position. Just import that. So when the mouse is moved, that's actually a bad name, but okay. Um, set the X and Y to to wherever the mouse is moved to, and then we return true because that signifies oh uh, libgdx that the input event was was handled and it, it shouldn't propagate to to whatever other listeners are are there. So so this is the render method, which is also the update method. Uh, it's only called once and libgdx automatically caps it to 60 frames per second so you don't need to do any limiting um, on your behalf so see so here Oops. so um, if if the mouse position has been moved it's not default to, to minus one we will create a new vector and then we will subtract the the current sprite position sorry these key bindings are horrendous <laughs> Then we normalize it, and then we multiply it by the the speed in pixels per second. So let's say 100 pic, yeah, 100 pixels per second, times the um, times the delta time. If you don't know what the delta time is, it's basically the time span between between the last frame and the current frame. It's used to to um, to to smooth, say, um, 30 frames per second on one device, 60 frames. On the other device, the delta time will be twice the delta time of the one on the 60 FPS device. So you can, um, the sprite movement will be the same, and um, it'll scale the same between the two. Sprite position. Now that ah. so this will just it will it will lock, um it will translate the sprite position to its current position plus whatever whatever frame offset we calculated here. So this is the the sprite badge. It automatically created up here. You can see, and that will automatically draw. And I can't remember the, the resolution of the texture what Alex put in, so this might not work, and I don't think it will, but it might need resizing. Oops. Just that? Ah. Okay, yeah. We really need to resize the texture. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> ah. Um, yeah. The way it's set up, um, 
the, the project setup will automatically link the assets folder from the Android to the desktop so you have one folder and it's shared between all projects so that, that should be fine assets data Okay, let's get it to 64. Okay, so I think we'll use the normal one. Oh yeah, but we'll have to refresh, I think. Never mind it, but... No, 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 I don't think so. Oh, well, maybe. <laughs> we didn't change the image on board. Ah, yeah. Nice. <laughs> Thank you. I think it's missing. <laughs> doesn't find it. Yeah. No, it is here. Is it? Okay. Well, it should be. <laughs> okay. X, Y. Sorry? Try and touch. It should. Okay. <laughs> so what? <laughs> I don't know what's happening here. <laughs> okay, I think some, something's wrong with the texture. Okay. Yeah. okay. Ah, we use the region. We don't need that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. That. Sorry. Th this it, this was just. Okay, it should work now. Let's let's hope. <laughs> <laughs> wow, okay. It's a size. Alright, okay, okay. just move um, on. Yeah, I just move on with the next sample. Oh, you, you can see how easy yeah. it would be if it worked. Yeah, just, just let's say it worked. Um, okay, it's not the sample. Next sample. Okay, what I also just showed you, um, you can do a lot of more elaborated games uh, with the engine as well. We have um, support for um, maps, tab maps, and um, you can easily create something like uh, a game like this. So I just modified one of the samples in inside. Uh, you have a huge bunch of samples. That's the good thing learning LibGDX. You have a lot of samples on any topic that really is out there on LibGDX. You have a, a specific sample. Like for any polygon shape render, where maybe you have a specific sample to this thing. And so this uh, is really extraordinary in terms of samples. And there's a sample I'm, I put in a Mario and I put in some small logic also, but actually it's just a normal platformer. And yeah, I show, I show you, you, have, you have this tiled map and I'll show you the, the editor later and yeah, let's have a look. <laughs> um. You can have it here. So you you have an uh, open source. Um, is it open source? Yeah, but it's free um, <laughs> program. And you modify your TMX files. You just create them from something like uh, a texture you have here. You put in here, and then you just build your game from it. And what comes out? It's kind of your nice game. And we added something here, and you can just 
destroy logos here. <laughs> and uh, this one, you, I just made a picture, a GIMP, put it in, in this kind of um, this kind of image over there, and then you can access this from this program and create your create your levels. And you can also see you can have the, the foreground, background, uh, so the physics layer. What you can have real kind of um, objects, or you can uh, define any layer you want and access it within the game. It's a bit more complicated this game, but it's actually amazing. It's just this game is just 300 lines in in uh, with two days. Uh, where is it? <laughs> Yeah, so what you have here is um, just go into basic creation and nothing more in detail. So you have a, a texture here. These are sprite animation textures. You create your animations that are defined with a kind of, I, I just showed you before, the animation frame. You lay out this, this kind of region and there can you access uh, from it all the regions and create your animations from it, set the play mode. And then on these... Um, creating, yeah, you render your your object, your Mario, and then you just, uh, given the state um, you're in, given the, the the keyboard or touch uh, position you, you have pressed and want to want to your Mario to go to, then you just adapt um, these, these animations. Okay, I have no time to go into details right now, and but I can show you that the whole listing is, is just like this. So we have the creation, you have the rendering, quite as as we did show you with the basic sample, and you have an update method which Im involves a lot of collision detection as well. You can eventually, if you want an uh, even more bigger project, you could also include this uh, with include a box to the handling with this. And yeah, that's it. So this is the whole project for this game, and. Um, as I just said, you have a Box2D integration with this very special. We have uh, JNI bindings to Box2D. And so it gives you collision detection, bodies, physics. And you can easily create uh, the bodies with, within an environment, like a Box2D <coughs> body editor. And just, yeah, this is it. Uh, dash. Uh. <laughs> So you, you can, for example, have a new project, or, oh no. You have to load the project. Where is it? Load here, yeah. Yeah, this is it. For example, you can define images. And just clicking here and surround it, you can even detect uh, your image. So let's have clear points. Let's auto trace, and then you get your fixture and everything done. So it divides. It also divides in, in convex uh, polygons. You see the green lines, and you can import this uh, this body into into your game. And I've already done that. And see. There's also some some sample of, of integration here. Um, where is it? Ah, the package explorer comes back. So I've put it in the same project as the Mario. I just changed the Java core class, which is called app in this case. I changed the dimensions here. Oh. <laughs> this is so <laughs> good. <laughs> I know. I want to remove this. I know. Yeah, you, you reverted the app to Super Mario. Yeah. Okay. 
I think it's uh, this one we launched. Okay, you can see a sample in libgdx uh, with box to d integration. So it's real physics, 2D physics, and you have all, yeah, quite a bunch of balls here, and it stops some some time. <laughs> Yeah, I'll leave it running a while. <laughs> okay, and so in the end, uh, what you can say about LibGDX, it's all open Apache 2D license, the whole project and the external libraries as well. And so it's cross-platform, it's high performance, it has OpenGL bindings, uh, you can uh, write it once in Java, deploy it on almost any device, including Android, multiple extensions, a lot of third party, third party Libraries are in development or have already been developed. I've shown you, for example, Physics Buddy today. And it was especially, especially it was initially built uh, for creating Android games. So the creator wanted to create Android games in the beginning, 2009, 2010, and so he wrote this uh, framework to make it a little bit uh, <laughs> easier. <laughs> well, maybe he, he did not ever finish a big game, but, <laughs> but uh, he did a great framework. <laughs> okay, thank you very much.